maybe it will make dating harder, but um, I don't have to tell them anything until I think we're serious. It really requires a very special person to be in a relationship with someone who is HIV positive. It is possible to love someone with HIV. It's not different than loving anybody else. Over 100,000 people are living with HIV in New York City. Christina Rodriguez and her mother Susan are two of them. These are their stories of living and loving as positive women. She wants kids and she I wants want a kids, family. but I don't want them now. Are you crazy? I don't remember when I found out when I had HIV. I really, I don't know. I wish I did, because I get asked that a lot, but I don't. Christina Rodriguez, a native New Yorker, was born with HIV. I might just have a maid of honor and screw you guys, I don't want a bridesmaid. <laughs> I'm 16, I turned 17 in November. And when I was younger, I could hardly like remember like even thinking about it, probably just because it's not something five-year-olds like think about. But you know, like kids, they want to be able to get cut and, <laughs> and not worry like that they're going to gush everywhere. And when I do get cuts, I, I wonder like what the other people sitting next to me think. Christina was diagnosed when she was three. The same year, both her parents tested positive. I accepted my diagnosis, but when they told me that my daughter was positive, it just was like the most horrible feeling you can ever like get. I was like devastated and all I could think of is I have to do whatever I have to do for her to keep her alive. <laughs> Susan had Christina tested along with her sister Samantha and brother Joseph, but only Christina was positive. She had been conceived at the same time as Susan had been infected by her husband. He either got it from sex with a man or he got it through drugs. It was just like being in a cloud. Christina and Susan tested positive in 1995. Almost 70,000 people in New York had already died from AIDS. A decade and a half later, thousands are still being infected. that you can see it, that it takes a certain gender or ethnicity, and that's not the way it is. It can happen to anyone. Like, it doesn't matter. You could be black, white, Spanish, Asian. You could be skinny, not so skinny. Yeah, some people yeah. think it's transmitted through kissing or drinking from the same cup or sitting in the same seat, which is the stupidest thing I've heard. There's just this one kid. He came up to me one time, I think, because I had told a story about my dad and AIDS, he kind of was trying to like piece things together. Um, but anyway, he's like, oh, so are you sick? Because if you are, I want to know, so I don't like you anymore. And I just looked at him, I was like, go away. Um, like, it's not your business, and I never liked you, and I never will. <laughs> so it does, I don't really care if you like me or not. Christina's attitude to her status is something her mother Susan has always encouraged. Three years after being diagnosed, she founded Smart University. Smart is a treatment and health education program for women living with and affected by HIV and AIDS. Today is our Smart Body class, and I don't know what they're making, but they always make something really delicious and healthy. 
So we're all set. Let's leave the chicken in the refrigerator for the last because we want to maintain the temperature. Some of them never cooked in their lives. You know, they just do fast foods. And this is an opportunity for them to cook and to take ownership for their own health. Hey, Sammy. Sammy, Wimmy. They're her women. They are her women. She takes care of them. No one's allowed to mess with them. You know, she, she looks after them. She really helps them. She's a very, very good woman. I could get credit. No, I don't know. Ms. Oh Diaz God. has a secret admirer. Oh my God, I think I know who it is, that girl. I can't even carry it. It's no, 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 no. Over there, put it over there. You carry it. Okay. I found out I had HIV in 1989, July 4th of 1989. My 4th of July present, it sucks. You made that? Okay. That's your work? He oh, did that, is that amazing? Love it makes me happy. I think my husband sent me flowers, but it was because he messed up. That's usually how it goes. And of course, I would see it on the charge bill. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you paid that much? You're crazy. And another fight would happen. <laughs> Christina's father died of AIDS a year after she and Susan were diagnosed. My husband had passed away um, November 19th, 1996, and it was the day before Christina's fifth birthday. I really felt bad for my kids, good or bad, whatever. They lost a father. You know, that was the tragic part. I have a few memories about my dad. I have one of him in the hospital. I didn't know then what was going on because my mom just always told me until I was like older like, oh, he died in a motorcycle accident. Like, I guess just because I still didn't even understand myself. I don't like to trash people. You know, my, he wasn't, he had his good points and not so good points. <laughs> but that's like in any relationship, I guess. <laughs> when Christina's father died, around the time she and her mother were diagnosed, the prognosis for people living with HIV was grim. When I tested positive, I said, okay, well, I have six months to live. You know, let me get my stuff in order and do whatever. I really thought it was a death sentence, even though, like, I wasn't sick or anything. Over a decade and a half later, the advent of new treatment means people diagnosed with HIV can hope for a normal lifespan. But sticking to the regime is far from easy. Since her diagnosis, Christina has had to swallow tens of thousands of pills. Last year, I had the meds that were still making me sick and stuff, and so I was getting sick, and I was depressed, and I was overwhelmed with school, and it was my junior year, and it was supposed to be the most important year. She had a really rough year last year, and actually, when she first started on this regimen a few years ago, it really wreaked havoc on her body. Everything that I had kind of just pushed aside out of my mind just so that I could be calm, relaxed, and normal, like, it just caught up with me. And it was like, pills? Like, what the hell? I don't want to do this anymore. She was hoarding doses. She wasn't even taking it. And I mean, I was cleaning her room and I found like a whole cache of pills. Not complying with the right medication can cause serious problems for those with HIV. Because if it isn't kept under control, it can lead to full-blown AIDS. She is on a kind of last resort kind of medication. So it's, it's very important for her to make sure that she takes these medications on time. There's just no room for her to miss a dose like how she had done before. It's just a little weird, like just, Growing up in a, in a, like, especially when you're a teenager, because you want all that freedom, whereas you're never really free. Coming up, Christina and her friends take a stand. They're going to go home with the protection. So and they're going to have it in their minds. All day, every day. Okay, we're going to 
41st and 9th. Friday night in New York City. It's 13 years since Christina Rodriguez was diagnosed with HIV. And it's three years since she helped to found Smart Youth, a group for teenagers living with or affected by HIV. I like the idea about being outside hospitals. I think also um, people feel more comfortable if they talk to somebody their own age. HIV isn't something in school that's brought to the kids' attention. And the health classes, they talk about it briefly, but they don't talk about all the risks. Tonight, Christina and her friends are trying something new. They're at a homeless shelter handing out food, HIV prevention packs, and condoms. I think we should have called ahead or something. We're giving them the condoms so that they'd be safe and they could prevent themselves from having HIV or getting an STD so that they can better protect themselves. Yes. Now we know for the second time we've done something good, all right? I didn't get to argue with this guy because he said he only did. Oh, give it up anyway. <laughs> we got bombarded. Definitely. Yeah, it was a little overwhelming. We um, thought we would be able to go in and kind of set it up and have a nice, organized feel. But we feel good, right? Yeah, because yeah. regardless, they, they're going to go home with the protection. So. And they're going to have it in their mind. All day, every day. That's how you got to work. Excuse me? Would you like to call them? Like, what is that? Just call them. You're welcome. Be safe. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> she said yes, that last one. <laughs> the HIV infection rates among 13 to 29 year olds are on the rise. Their statistics Christina is trying to do something about. Christina actually got in trouble for giving out condoms. <laughs> I would love to see a real health class go on in schools because that will change the and world. And really showing them how to use condoms and what That just needs, it needs to be shown. Because giving that to them doesn't necessarily mean they know how to use it. You know? What if they put it on their heads? Yeah. Is that condoning? Is that promoting? What she cares about is that they're staying safe. You just have to know. Make sure that you, if you're having sex, to have safe sex, you know? Safe sex is the best sex. I wouldn't no know, but... No sex at all. <laughs> I can't even comment anymore. <laughs> no, I'm not dating. I've never had a boyfriend, so... There's not many guys around and no one worth my time. Especially in Harlem. It really requires a, a very special person to um, be in a relationship with someone who is HIV positive. You know, it requires education and sensitivity. It's tough out there, and you know, I ain't birthing no babies. I don't want any babies. And she, she wants kids, and she I wants want a kids, family. I want kids, but I don't want them now. Are you crazy? When Christina was six, Susan founded Smart University, an organization aimed at helping provide information and support to HIV-positive women. One of the most important things that we try to, you know, get across to the women is that you need to learn to love yourself. Many of us have been through experiences um, that maybe have been very devastating to you and you, you just don't feel like you're worth loving. Depression is common among people living with HIV, and it's something Christina has had to battle with. Last year at school, my junior year, was just, um, it's like a big blur now. Um, it was a blur then too, like I had gone through a depression because I don't know why. It, it kind of just happened, like it was like, oh, why do I feel so sad this morning? <laughs> like, I don't feel like going anywhere. And, um, and then like, if that wasn't like bad enough, I had the meds that were still making me sick and stuff. 
Depression, my daughter Samantha went through the same thing. I specifically don't attribute it to being HIV positive, but um, I'm sure being a teen, going through puberty and having HIV on top of it absolutely um, affects her. To have this on top of having a life-threatening illness that has to be managed with pills and regimens and schedules has to play into her mental health. It was kind of just a chemical thing. It's something that kind of runs in the family. I just never thought it would happen to me. But of course, everything bad that runs in the family happens to me. Growing up is tough, man. Teens are tough. I wouldn't be a teen to save my life again. The thing is, is that she didn't grow up with it, which is which makes a really big difference. And like, yeah, I mean, I love my mom. And it's it's nice to have like someone I can sort of relate to, but um, but yeah, there's just some things that like, mom, you went to school and you were able to do this and able to do that. Whereas like, you know, it's, it's kind of a big thing for me, so. Christina was born with HIV <laughs> and diagnosed when she was three, the same year as Susan. When most of my friends in my school, actually most of my school, <laughs> found out, my sister had done a project about me. When I went back, I was so scared the next day. Oh my God, they're gonna pity me, <laughs> like, oh, I don't want everyone hugging me and stuff, but it was pretty normal, like, yeah, and it's just like, whatever. Christina is now in her final year at school and making plans to go to college. I can't wait to go to college, actually, just to meet the whole bunch of new people, just because I like meeting people and having new experiences. Well, my machine is probably going to be coming with me, so whoever is my roommate is obviously going to know something is up or I'm just a drug addict <laughs> or something like that. Maybe it will make dating harder, but um, like I figure I don't have to tell them anything until I think we're serious, which probably won't be happening anytime soon. So I'm not too worried right now about whatever happens with that because I'm not searching for the guy I want to marry. Look, the BK bridge. Look, that pole's in the way. Let's walk, 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 walk. I want to sleep, Phil. That'd be great. <laughs> Wait, let me do my that. Zoom. How do you guys want to I would totally love television and media just to show people with HIV just normally. I don't want them to use a sob story, like, sob story is just like, oh, it, it's sad, but it doesn't even hit home for me, like, because I would not use my life as a sob story. Change the battery pack. No! Save it. Save it. Susan has dedicated her working life to HIV awareness. Christina is trying to decide if she will do the same. I was like, Mom, you know, I'll, I'll take over SMART when you don't feel like doing it. And she's like, no, you're not going into nonprofit. None of my children. I was like, Mom, why, why not? She was like, it's too much. She kind of doesn't want me to do it. There have been times when there was no money. We had maybe like one month operating expenses. And I said, OK, well, you know, whatever. You know, we, we did the best we could. And then something fabulous would happen. <laughs> the Matt Gates Fund, Jane Freeman, you know, the other foundations, they've kept our doors open. Just when I was gonna get out, <laughs> they banged me back in. <laughs> It's been 10 years since Susan founded Smart University. It's something Christina can't remember her life without. Today, they are celebrating that decade. We're doing it! They are hosting a ceremony at the New York Academy of Medicine. I have not written a speech at all, so I'm kind of going to be doing it off the cuff. 
It should be very interesting. <laughs> If somebody had told me that I would be here 10 years later, I mean, let alone was smart, just here, I probably wouldn't have believed them. If it wasn't for the doors open in the year 2000 when I came through smart, I would be a woman lost out there. I want to be here. I want to be here for the women. I want to be here for my family. Um, and, and that's what's important in my life. I love my daughter, I love all my children unconditionally, and I wouldn't trade this life for anything. I love my mom. She's, I wouldn't trade her for any other mom. Life, um, I don't know, you know, sometimes I just want a more low-key life. It would be so nice, you know? Other than that, it's a pretty good life.